In my Freiburg, Maine family, pie was the tangible sign of stern expectations. The stern expector was my grandfather, Augustus Henry Smith. He was born in 1880. He believed in frugality and planning. He believed women had roles. Women should sew, it saved money. Women, of course, cooked, but they had to plan their meals so there were no leftovers, because for Grandpa, leftovers were a sign of profligacy. <laughs> meals had to be served on time, breakfast at 7.30, dinner at noon, supper at 6, and all meals must end with pie. This was old New England. Well, my grandmother lived up to his expectations. She loved to sew, she cooked, not just pies, but bread pudding, fried dough, donuts, brown sugar cookies, all the crucial cultural carbohydrates. <laughs> but only one of her two daughters inherited that skill. My Aunt Beth, my mother's older sister, she was Grandpa's ideal daughter. She sewed most of her clothes and cooking. She could feed a dozen people on a half a pound of hamburger. <laughs> One of her favorite recipe clippings was for fried stuffed bologna horns. <laughs> Just imagine. <laughs> now my mother, Marty, was the family's domestic black sheep. She loved to dance, she studied diplomatic history. She wouldn't cook, so my father did the cooking. She said she would sew only at gunpoint. <laughs> my father asked her to sew only once, and on that occasion, she replaced the worn out snaps on the fly of the trousers of his pajamas with safety pins. <laughs> he never asked her to sew again. Well, it was when my mother was almost 50 that her mother, my grandmother, died. So all of us immediately converged on Freiburg to be with Grandpa, I, my mother and father, Aunt Beth and Uncle Bob, and simultaneously we realized we were gonna have to serve Grandpa his dinner the next day at noon. Before Aunt Beth could propose one of her frugal casseroles, my father said, I'll make a steak dinner. And then my mother said, I'll bake the pie. <laughs> there was a stunned silence. She looked so hopeful. <laughs> well, I helped. The next morning, I sliced apples while she wrestled, and that was the right word, with the crust. She'd roll it out, scrape it off the rolling pan, add flour, knead it again, roll it again, scrape it off, add flour, kneel it again, again and again, until finally she arrived at two acceptably round crusts, fitted one in the pan, I added a mountain of apples, and then I read the recipe while she added the seasonings. Cloves, dump. Nutmeg, dump. Cinnamon, Dump. Lemon juice. <laughs> Sugar. Dump. Dot it with butter. Dot. <laughs> Dot. Then she fitted the second crust on, stabbed some vent holes, put it in the oven. All this time, no one had dared come into the kitchen. <laughs> but as soon as the pie started baking, the aroma filled the house and people we're smiling. We served dinner almost at noon. The steak was a little too pink for the New England sense of safety. <laughs> and then my mother brought out the pie and set it in front of Grandpa. It was magnificent, a golden dome. She looked so happy. Grandpa lifted the pie server, pressed it on the top of the pie, and nothing happened. <laughs> he tapped on it. <laughs> it was like knocking on a hollow door. My mother was looking worried. 
Grandpa took a clean steak knife and stabbed through the top of the mountain, carved out a piece, and then turned the pie pan so we all could see. <laughs> Under that sturdy dome was airspace <laughs> down to a layer of very well-cooked apples. My mother was holding her heart in her hands. Grandpa carved out six equal pieces, no leftovers, passed them around, and we all took our first bites at the same moment. Eyebrows flew up around the table. <laughs> the cloves, Aunt Beth said, nice. I, I've always liked cinnamon, I said. <laughs> My father said, the nutmeg is distinctive. <laughs> Uncle Bob, never a slave to manners, burst out, has anybody tried the lemon yet? <laughs> My mother was rocking back and forth. She didn't look up even when Grandpa spoke. Marty, Marty, this is a memorable pie. <laughs> I thank you. Their eyes met. The corners of Grandpa's mouth started to twitch. And then, in the midst of his bereavement, he burst out laughing. My mother didn't crack a smile. You're welcome. Tomorrow, I'll bake you another one. <laughs> and she did. And it was better. And over time, she became the family's official apple pie baker. But she could never serve one without someone's muttering, has anybody tried the lemon yet? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>